Thank you, Nico. It's very kind of you to um, ask me and invite me for this uh, launching of the platform. It's a pleasure to be here. I'll start to sharing my screen. And the pronunciation is right, by the way. I mean, there are so many ways of, of saying that, so it's fine. So they always ask me uh, how I'm doing here in Sweden because I come from such a different climate and, and so far so good. But it's it's a reality that in Brazil we have a lot of yeah, a lot of hours with daylight. So it's pretty different. And I think this difference is they make it very special to work with daylight in a, such a different environment. Um, so I uh, it's it's very happy. To say, I'm very happy to see uh, many faces that I recognize here. I was colleagues with Eftinia and with Anton as well. I worked with Paul and had my thesis supervised by Marie Claude. So it's a pleasure to be here talking a little bit about you know how the profession is going and so on. So uh, as the others, I work as a daylight specialist as well at White Architecture. We are a large firm, architectural firm, who uh, has many offices here in Sweden and abroad as well in Germany, in Canada, and in London. We're going, we're going quite fast in London as well right now. And I have my bachelor's in architecture. So, and that was in Brazil. I'm graduated in Brazil. And then I came to Sweden in 2016 to take, to take the same masters as the other colleagues here who just spoke about a little bit. Um, so I graduated as well in environmental building and design. And what's very special um, in that um, is that I think I'm, I'll talk a little bit more today, but I wrote a thesis, which is called Daylight Optimization in an Office Building Through Atrium Improvements. And um, something that was very special for me about daylight, it was always very connected to architecture. And as an architect, I really see the value in that. Uh, we tend to maybe um, work a little bit closer to you know many daylight aspects, but I think education is really fundamental to all that. And I had the pleasure uh, at my last year to write a project with uh, Marie Claude and connect this um, this thesis actually to one of the buildings that were at the time that was being designed by White. So the idea was, okay, how we can investigate atrium performance and how we can add value to the project by um, you know, just bringing daylight, um, some daylight simulations and daylight understanding to the whole design process so we could actually shape the building too. So the building could be, um, could offer better rooms and could also comply with the regulations that we have here in Sweden. And in 2019, it was very rewarding that I was actually awarded the best poster in a CISBAT conference in Switzerland in 2019. Uh, so that was very, very, very nice uh, to have this recognition. But jumping a little bit, I didn't prepare like a long uh, presentation, rather just a bit more of a talk and, and you know about my experience and how I think this is really relevant. It, it has always been for me, because I think, well, one can argue, but I really, I really doubt it's good. It's uh, possible to have good architecture without good daylight. Of course, we talk mostly about functional daylight, and how all these buildings they have to comply with the regulations and so on. But I think it's a really important part. So it has always been rel very relevant to me. And that's, I think, how I get um, really in touch with the topic and how important that was to uh, be able to influence the design process or understand a little bit more, you know, each gesture that we architects usually do when we are drawing a plan or we are shaping the building, how daylight come into play in that process. So that's how I got very connected to this topic. And we all know how important it is daylight. I mean, so many great speakers here. I also worked with Paul Rogers, which was a great pleasure. And uh, they all have spoken about how important is daylight, not only to our health, but to diminish and decrease the uh, electrical lighting need as well in buildings. And I really, I really think that education is key to all that because especially in daylight, and I'm really happy that this platform is really being launched and can be accessible from many different places and educate professionals and enthusiasts about it because um, during my education in the master course, I was really able to understand, I think, all the, the fundamentals of daylight, you know, this base knowledge that we really need to understand to be able to, I think, work in the field and, and probably um, 
be able to influence the design process because we're mostly talking about you know, to some scale buildings or to another scale urban design. So how we can understand this topic really deeply so we could mostly uh, understand as well the concepts and be able to work with all these tools that are very important. And one thing that is important is, as Paul mentioned very well, is that I mean, we can always just press the button if you like. But I think we want really more than that. We want to understand you know, how they like and to what extent is important to us and to the buildings and to all the users of the buildings. And I think that really reflects into the metrics that we are using now. So many metrics are being created. Uh, of course, now in Sweden, we use a lot of uh, daylight factor to, to ensure building compliance and even to inform the design in the early stages. But it's really important to understand um, how these metrics play out and how we can use them to inform the design process. And if we use these tools, it's, it's vital that we can uh, have a very deep understanding and you know, of all these metrics and, and what they really represent and how we can actually, and when we can use them because different metrics, they apply to different uses. Uh, and being a daylight specialist, I think that's one of the, one of the key roles that we have is to inform the design and to understand how we can do that as well in different stages of the design process. And that's something that I've been really working today uh, since I work in an architecture office, so we have a team of daylight specialists. We have Alejandro and Ma, who studied the same master course in Lund, among others. And we're always ready to jump in and help the design processes, the early stages up to the qualifying and compliance stages as well. And I think most of all, it's for us and, and for, all, for all the others who are specializing learning about daylight, it's always very important to understand the context in which we actually um, work in. We have different regulations across different different countries. I mean, Brazil is completely different. And I've been giving some lectures and you know, trying to inform a little bit more professionals about it and then how it works and so on. So it's, a, you know, we have a completely different way of designing buildings in different contexts. And I think daylight is, is a very important part of that. I mean, daylight, we, as an architect, I really believe we can use the daylight knowledge and all these fundamentals we have to shape better buildings and, and influence the design process in a very good way, not only to make them compliant, but uh, luckily to help in the very early stages and help to make, to design better cities, better urban contexts. And here in Sweden, we talk a lot about daylight factor, even though I think in the future we can be moving to, who knows, maybe uh, planet-based uh, modeling. That would be something very interesting. I think now and then we, we have the opportunity to apply this knowledge and to bring these metrics to the table and you know dig a little bit deeper into uh, what the building really means and how we can influence and probably push the building design to also a very a much better understanding much better consideration for the daylight levels and, and I think overall to influence that and to understand the context that we're working is very important and how we can contribute within the text, within the context. So understanding mostly uh, the regulations that are in place here in Sweden, for example, uh, all the metrics that are being used and how we can play as a daylight specialist. And as Paul said, um, Different places have different regulations, and, and here in Sweden, I think that's one of the great things as they as a daylight specialist that we can really bring to the table to understand these regulations and to be able to negotiate with uh, municipalities and and the, um, the the building owners as well. And uh, with that being said, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there but for me um, as an architect. It's always very impressive and very rewarding to be very close to the architects so we can you know we can always help them along the design process and to understand what the metrics are about what daylight is about and, and how we can actually shape that building you know the other way around not only um, making them compliant as I said before but also making them better buildings or you know use the 
the knowledge that we have, understanding the urban context before we even start building that building or before we even start planning that building so we can contribute in the best way. So I think the daylight profession or the daylight specialist nowadays, you know, he can work in so many different environments. And we've seen that. I mean, there's so many different opportunities, you know, uh, in the field. Um, and I think uh, following the design process and building new tools is is one of the things that are very are, are very challenging. I think my work at my work um, we often get to build new tools as well to bring this knowledge, you know, to to make um, daylight more understandable to the architects as well. So that's one of the great things about working as a daylight specialist. And also, I think what's very uh, what's very challenging now is how we can bring daylight to the very fast pace of the design process. So this is a great challenge we have nowadays. How can we inform the designers or the architects um, in a fast way so they can actually implement all this knowledge and all these metrics and all this you know, daylight service that we have and, uh, into the design process and how we can make the most out of it. So the building at the end or the urban area at the end has very good qualities when it comes to, to daylight. And I think that was it. I had to share a little.